Okay, question number three from electrostatics and a sweet application of Gauss law. Not much difficult. You see, an infinitely long thin conducting wire is parallel to the z-axis and carries a uniform line charge density lambda. It pierces a thin non-conducting spherical shell. All right, so here the statement is this. This is the given, you see, infinitely long. That's an infinitely long non-conducting length, and here that particular thing is given as lambda, and this is given as z-axis, right? Now let's see. Here, the electric flux through this shell is this much. So let's try to calculate the electric flux through the shell. Electric flux would be charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught, and to calculate the charge enclosed, I need to calculate the length of this portion because this is the line charge which is enclosed. This is R and this is 60. So this length has to be root 3 R by 2, R sine 60. So this would also be root 3 R by 2. Effectively, the total length which is enclosed is root 3 R. So therefore, the charge enclosed has to be lambda into root 3 R, charge enclosed by epsilon naught. Option number A is correct. Next. The Z component of the electric field is zero at all points on the surface of the shell. This perfectly seems fine. Let's try to see. The Z component, and if I want to calculate the Z component, you see, the electric field due to this particular thing, it's an infinitely long line charge. So around the mid, the electric field would go radially outward in a cylindrical radius form. So if this is the line charge, the electric field would be going in this way. You see, at any given plane, the electric field would be radially outward. That means the Z component of the electric field would be zero. The entire electric field is present only in the XY plane. So therefore, option number B seems perfectly fine. The electric flux through the shell is this much. All right, if option A is correct, then an option number C has to be incorrect. The electric field is normal to the surface of the shell. Well, it is not normal because it's radially outward in a cylindrical manner. So it can't be perpendicular to the shell. So for this question, question number three, the correct option goes option number A and B. Okay, time to move to question number four. Let's see. Question number four taken from ray optics and this one is a short but a very tricky question. It may challenge your thought process. So this is what discussing. A wire is bent in the shape of a right angle triangle and is placed in front of a concave mirror of focal length F as shown. Which of the figures shown in the four options qualitatively represents the shape of the image of the bent wire? Now, let's see. It's something like this. Say. This is the concave mirror. And in front of the concave mirror, a triangular wire is kept. Notice one end is at the focus, the other is at f by 2. And the image of this triangular wire, we need to choose. Either it could be this option, where the image of the triangle is the triangle, or it could be this option. One is a straight line, other goes there till infinity. The third is this, and the fourth is this the straight line, then parallel till infinity. Now, as I said, this is really a short, however, a very good question. Let's try to see. We'll try to do it qualitatively. You know, the image of all this portion is going to be a virtual one. So here, what we'll do is say, I'll just try to plot the structure of this thing, and it goes something like this. If I see here, all the images are going to be a virtual one. Let me first plot the image of an object which is lying at f by 2. The first one would be, it would go parallel to the principal axis, then it has to pass through the focus. So here it goes, passes through the focus. And another one is, see, passing through the focus, imaginary, so we'll just extend it. It's a regular ray diagram I'm doing, and this will go parallel to the principal axis. So this is how 
the ray would be going there. And it's something like this. This is the reflected ray. This is the reflected ray. These are the two reflected rays. And they do not have any chance of meeting. Of course, the image would be a virtual one. So we would be extrapolating it behind. And when I extrapolate it behind, it would go something like this. And this, when I extrapolate it here. In other words, the image of this particular point is being formed here. Let's see. Now, one thing what you need to understand here is, if I try to draw the image of this particular point, any one, then again, one would go passing through the focus. Remember, here the structure is such that this line passes through the focus. So the incident ray for every object, all these objects, one incident ray can be taken as this. And that would go parallel to the principal axis on reflection. And for all the objects, the reflected ray is this. So for all the objects, one of the extended reflected ray would be this one, the straight one which goes this, for all the objects lying here. In other words, you need not consider the second reflected ray, because the second reflected ray, wherever it would meet, it would be meeting along this particular line, because one reflected ray goes in this way. In other words, the image of the head of the objects, if you call all these as the object's head, you could see one reflected ray corresponding to the head of the object is this when you extrapolate it behind. In other words, the second ray of any given object which would meet would be meeting on this particular line. In other words, the image of these head of the objects would be along this line parallel to the principal axis. This is all caused because the object goes in this particular way. So therefore, for this particular question, the correct option is option number D. It may be a bit non-intuitive. And this is all happening because the object, which is the hypotenuse, is passing through the focus. So yes, for this particular question, question number four, the correct option is option number D. It doesn't have multiple options. It's a single option. All right, now let's go to question number five.